everyone. Today I want to share with you how to naturalize daffodils. And if you're anything like me, you just love the look of a planting of daffodils coming out of an old lawn. Maybe it's a big drift along a bank. Maybe it's a steep hill covered in daffodils come spring. But what we're talking about here is a natural planting of daffodils that happens outside a formal or constricted garden border. It's basically where we're just going to throw the bulbs and wherever they land, that's where we're going to plant them. And I really love the look of daffodils used in this manner. I really think this is the best way to use daffodils. It just makes sense and really is a hands-off approach because once you plant them, there's no weeding, watering, fertilizing, even generally dividing that we have to do with these daffodils. As long as we select a good planting site from the start, they will perform for 30 to even 50 years without any human intervention. So the number one thing to think about when naturalizing daffodils is really just the planting site because it's pretty easy to plant the daffodils once you have the site down. So what you're looking for is a site that gets about six hours of sun in the spring. And maybe you think, well, I wanna plant them right here, but I think it's actually too shady. Well, remember to think about what that area looks like in the spring, because if you're working around deciduous trees, you might have more sun there in the late winter and early spring than you think. And you might be able to plant them in that area. So think about six hours of sun come late winter into early spring. The next important thing is to select a site that is well drained because really the only thing that's going to hurt your daffodil bulbs at the end of the day is to sit in water and rot. And some of us, depending on what our properties look like, maybe there's an area in your property that really just does tend to collect water for one reason or another. That's probably a good area to just stay away from. But as long as the soil where you're planting the daffodils is free draining, they will naturalize beautifully in that area. And the final thing to take into consideration is to select a planting site where you don't need to mow that area until about early June because you want to give the daffodils about six to even preferably eight weeks to photosynthesize after blooming. So if they're blooming in late April, early May, I really don't want to be mowing that section of my lawn until June. I want to give that bulb as much time as possible to photosynthesize, recharge the bulb for next year, and basically die back naturally. I really don't want to mow that area until I see the foliage start to yellow and brown and die back naturally. So that's something to think about too, is your planting area somewhere where you can kind of let it get a little wide during the growing season or maybe you can just mow a little path around it and you know I really understand that that can be a challenge in some areas especially areas that maybe have certain codes where you have to keep your lawn to a certain height I think a good way around this is to basically mow around your naturalized area that's what I'm going to be doing because I'm planting a lot of mine over in my driveway garden so I'm sprinkling hundreds of daffodil bulbs all around over there but I'll go ahead ahead and just mow one little section all around so that it's obvious to my neighbors that I'm still taking care of my lawn and that this is a purposeful planting. So now that you've selected the perfect planting site to naturalize daffodils, we can go ahead and get to planting. And this part is really fun and easy. I like to just fill my wheelbarrow full of daffodils and then what I do is I literally just throw them on the lawn. I just throw handful upon handful as I walk around the lawn in the whole area where I want them to naturalize and wherever they fall is where I'm going to plant them. This will help you avoid the look of straight and rigid lines or patterns because basically we want it to look like nature planted these daffodils rather than a human sprinkling or plopping them into hole after hole after hole. Now, after you have your bulb sprinkled on the ground, you wanna go ahead in there with a ball planter or a shovel. Some people even use a crowbar, but basically you just wanna create a hole that's about six to eight inches deep. We're looking at about two to three times the depth of the bulb, but with a naturalized planting, it's always best to go on the 
the deeper end of things. So if I was planting daffodils in my garden, six inches would be totally fine and I would feel really comfortable with that depth. But when we're talking about a bulb that we have intent to stay in the ground for the possibility of 50 years, really try to go down three times the depth of the bulb. So here I wanna go down eight inches. So I just stick my bulb planter in the ground. I pop the bulb in, pointy side up, basal root plate side down, put the soil right back in the hole, give it a little firming over, and really that's all there is to it. You basically never have to touch these daffodils again. The most important thing going forward is just remember not to mow them down until you see them die back naturally. And I think that's just another reason to try out a naturalized planting of daffodils because it really is just that easy. And once you get into the groove of things, it's really easy to plant a few hundred bulbs in just an hour or two. And just think, an hour or two of your time and in return, 30 to 50 years of daffodils each spring. I just think there's something really wonderful about driving around different older developments and seeing these huge banks of daffodils and thinking about the person who planted those. And in a way, I think when you plant daffodils in an area where maybe your neighbors or passer buyers can see them, you're not only blessing yourself with this floral show, but you're blessing everyone else as well. Because let's face it, sometimes if you live in a place, especially like myself, where the winter's are really harsh and you get a lot of snow and you're wondering you know in February and even March oh when is the winter going to end and then you see that glorious daffodil show I just think it brings so much cheerfulness to everyone and the other thing is you can add into this area some other bulbs that naturalize easily and readily things like snowdrops grape hyacinth, crocus, even some fritillarias. There's even some species tulips that will naturalize readily. I'll put as many as I can think of in the description section, but you really can create a whole naturalized bulb meadow, if you will, in an area where there once was just lawn. And you know, isn't that so wonderful to be able to look out your window in April, and even if you had snowdrops, right, even earlier than that, to look out your window and to see this beautiful bulb metal rather than just grass. I think it's absolutely wonderful and I hope it's something that really comes back as the norm in our society. One other thing to think about is do you want to plant all the same variety of daffodil and have them bloom all at the same time and then finish at the same time? Do you want to mix it up with different colors and forms? You know there are 13 classifications of daffodils so you can add in things like long trumpets, split corona, short cups. There are so many different daffodils to choose from. But what I really think is important, especially if you want to extend this naturalized planting show for as long as possible, is to focus more on the bloom time rather than the actual variety. So maybe I'll start the season with something like a Dutch Master. That's that classic bright yellow daffodil that probably many of us think of when we think of daffodil, but then maybe come in mid-season with something like an art design double and then finish off the season with a later variety like the poet's daffodil. And so that's what you saw me doing today. I was taking into consideration when I picked out the daffodils, I wanted some that were early, mid, and late. And I also wanted a few different divisions. I did some long cups, some short cups, some doubles, and some tazetta. So really mix it up, get creative. Put in your lawn what you love, what you wanna look at, what you wanna cut for the vase later on. And really, I just think it's a joy to naturalize daffodils. I really hope everyone really starts to do this and that it really becomes, like I say, the norm. Well guys, I wanna wish you a great day and until next time, happy gardening. Bye.